speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It's Black History Month, and Jane Weldon Johnson wrote a poem talking about the prodigal son, the son that left home, and the name of the poem that he wrote he was, Your arms are too short to box with God. He said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard to do what? It is hard to kick against the pricks. It is hard to kick against the pricks. Now, I want you to see something. We'll read the rest of that in a minute. But when we talk about pricks, we're talking about sharp, whether it's wood or metal objects that they would put on the fence to keep animals from running through the fence and either to keep them in or to keep them out. But this is called a prick. In our day and time, we don't use that. We use barbed wire, barbed wire. And barbed wire can be lethal. And in prisons, they use razor wire keep people from trying to escape. So in, in Paul's day, in olden day, in, in the farm and country where I grew up, if they was having some problems, they knew how to put a prick there, all right? Now, now, go back to verse 15. Let's, let's go ahead and read all of it. I'm going to take my subject here. Paul said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, whom you persecuted. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which I have seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Now watch this. To open their eyes. This year is a year of sight, sin vision, been able to see. God says to Paul, I want you to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So my subject today, if you just help me look at somebody real quick, look at them, tell about two or three people, tell them, stop fighting against God. Come on, help me out, help me out. Look at somebody, look at somebody, tell them, stop fighting against God. Stop fighting against God. Now, these are pricks, and, and God is saying to Paul, you don't realize it, but you're fighting against me. You don't understand it that when you're disobedient, you're fighting against me. Now, when, you, when, you, when you're fighting and kicking against God, it's, it's a prick. It's not that God is hurting you. You got to get that. He loves us too much to hurt us. It is not that God is hurting us. It is in our resistance. When you kick, when they had an unruly animal or some animal that was not obedient or some trying to get in, they would put these pricks. So when they hit this prick, it would, it would not kill them. It wasn't designed to kill them, but it would prick them. It would sting to let them know not to go this direction, not to go this way in life. Pricks. So when Paul, when, when God says to Paul, there are some things that you can do in life that will invite pain into your life. I want you to stay there for a second. I want you to stay there for a second. Now bring, bring that out. I want, I want you to hear that. I don't have long, but digest this. They are pricksing, never designed to kill you. Because after they sting you, it would move. It was just enough to make you stop pushing or going in the wrong direction. Now, 
Now, what, 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 what we have done, yes, stretch it out for a second. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. What, what we have done, we, we, we've, shown, we've shown our children the real nice garments we got in our closets and, and what they've seen and the way we talk to them and tell them what they should do. But we need to show them what else is hanging in our closets that we don't want to talk about. We talk about all the nice stuff that happens. But we need to let them know that it was some times that mom and daddy kicked against some stuff. And we brought pain into our lives. Sometimes the reason why we're so adamant and we're so forceful, our children need to understand it's because we make them the same mistakes. And we don't want them to be a teenage mother. We don't want them to be a teenage father. Because there's pain. Now, Understand this. Understand this. Uh, I wish, I wish I had a, let me see if I got any. I ain't got my, let me see. Let me see. The youngest one I got. Bring Jada up here. Aaliyah, bring Jada to me. I see. Y'all know what this is? What is this? It's a baby gate. It's a baby gate. This gate is designed See, come on. See, now, hey, Aaliyah, this gate is designed, and just hold her hand right there, see, hold Leah's hand. Just, this gate is designed to keep our small children from going into certain areas. They see it as an obstacle. But we put it there to keep them from destroying themselves or hurting themselves. They see it as a prick. We put these on stairwells. You know, my little grandson, we got stairs in the house and he climbs all the way to the top. Looking down. Now he makes one wrong move, he's going to fall and tumble down the steps. So, so what we do is put these gates here to keep our children from hurting or destroying themselves. But when you're a child, you see that as something that is mean. You see that as something that they can't do. You see it as an obstacle. But it is really for your safety. Oh, I'm going to get deep into it in a minute. I'm going a little deep. God has placed gates in all of our lives. You know why? Because just like, just like we are parents, God is a parent. And he's put some gates up there. And one of the gates, one of the gates says, thou shall not. And if you're not careful, you think God is being mean and God doesn't want you to have fun. And God's trying to take everything away from you. But he's really trying to keep us from destroying our lives. So we have these gates for our children. Thank you, grandkids. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We have these gates hanging right there. We have these gates, and everybody got gates in their lives. Now, I hate to tell you, as your pastor, when I was your age, I did run against the pricks. Come on. Remember, it wasn't, it wasn't here to kill me. It was here to keep me from danger. Come on, won't y'all look at me like that? Come on, Minister Avery, Lisa. Come on, come on. Come on, Minister Washington. Come on, come on, y'all. We all got pricks. Come on, Sister Stephanie. Come on, come on. I'm going to bring you out today, parents. Come on. So, Patilla, come on. Come on. We, we ran up against it. And some of us were persistent. And we invited pain into our lives. Can I get a witness? Is it anybody in here over 21 that's invited pain in your life? Oh, yeah. Look, children. Look, look, look. So when, when mama seemed to be 
angry, when daddy seemed to be uh, out, outrate and seemed like he's trying to keep you from doing anything. He's trying to keep pain from your life. Who can I talk about it? I can talk about it because I got word too. I got word to back it up. See, mama said, don't go here, don't go there. It was a gate. She was trying to keep me from destroying myself like most of my friends that ended up dead and incarcerated. And she put pricks there. Huh? But there was times that I ran away from home. Oh, y'all didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I did. Thank God for the pricks that brought me back in alignment or else I wouldn't be standing here talking to you today. I didn't think my mother was being fair because everybody else got a chance to do it. Y'all all got curfews. I didn't have a curfew. My curfew was go to school, come home. That was a curfew. One no curfew. Curfew, what's that? It wasn't, it wasn't, don't let the lights beat you in. No, 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 no. Huh? And it seemed to me like she was being mean and she wasn't being fair. She wasn't being like the rest of the parents until I got old enough to see what happened to all of my friends. It was a gate. It was a baby gate. God says, I'm putting gates up. You are my children. We will never be the adults of God. We will always be the children of God. You ought to give him some praise for that. I don't want to be an adult of God. I want to be a child of God. So there's pricks. Put the next one, scriptures up. Gonna go a little deeper. There are things that keep you from being destroyed. This is not going to destroy you. A prick in, in, in the Greek, this word means to sting. This doesn't, this won't destroy you. This is only to keep you from going where you shouldn't go. Now, if you keep on being real persistent, you keep on pushing, keep on pushing, and then you just turn them and you'll go on anyway. The real danger is on the other side. To be pricked is a blessing. Because he's, because what the farmer was trying to do is keep, keep the cattle in a certain place because once they go outside, there are wolves outside. You ran into, okay. <laughs> you ran into a few wolves, haven't you? He don't look like a wolf. He look like a lamb in wolf clothing. But if you persist on, God says to Israel, go ahead then. God says, this is not what I want for you. This is not what I want for your life. But since you're going to persist, he says, go on then. You never want God to tell you to do something or give you permission to do something that he doesn't want you to do. Repeat after me. I want everything God wants me to have. Say it again. I want everything that God wants me to have. And I don't want anything. Come on, come on, talk to me. So I don't want anything. I don't want no thing that God doesn't want me to have. Now give him a praise for that. Pricks. Now remember, it seems me. I was the only somebody that couldn't in my neighborhood. Couldn't. Be out at dark. Mama had a tight leash on me. Come on. And I thought it was been me. Huh? But you put this up because you love. And when God started telling me right in the midst that I put a gate in your life because I love you, I had to stop studying and start praising him. Because I started thinking about the different gates he put in my life that would have destroyed me. Oh, you ought to praise him on that. You got pricked, but you didn't get destroyed. You got stuck, but you didn't get destroyed. He did it to help us. Now, watch, 
watch this, watch this, because he said, where are the gates at? There are some things that he says, thou shalt not. Now, now come on, let's, let's, let's go through this real quick. Y'all already know it. Y'all already know it. I'm up here now. Don't do like I used to do. Oh, another lecture. Oh, she getting ready to tell me something again. Ah. But now I realize it was a baby gate, a teenage gate. And God says, I got gates when you get older. When he jumped on you when you were dating him. That was a prick. Oh, Lord. Well, I'm talking to all of us. I ain't just talking to folks. We're talking to everybody. Everybody. That was a prick. When he was unfaithful, when you were dating, that's a prick. It says, don't go any further. Because you didn't understand a prick, you married a prick. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I, what? Did I, huh? Male or female? Come on, come on, come on. So the rest of your life, you getting. That's real. I want you to see this picture. Come on, look at it. Come here. Come here, come here. I want, I want you to see. Is, is, is that, just feel that. Come here, come here, give me some. <laughs> feel that, see it. Where, where, where's some uh, young ladies? Come, come here, come here, see, see. Is that sharp? That, you know, if you run into that, you think that'll hurt? Okay. This is a physical picture of what real life is like. There are things in life that will prick you or sting you. When that happens, thank God for it. Oh. oh. Because, now, now, now watch this. Because, because what the pricks are saying, say no. We only praise God when he say Yes to our request. But if God ever told you no, you should praise him like you crazy. Cause he just kept you out of all kind of stuff. He kept you out of all kind of headaches and hell aches and all kind of mess. Cause he said no. No. And he said, Pastor, you, 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 you judging us, you condemning us? No, I can't. Cause I'll make sure I keep this in my closet. You say, you want to remember that time? Yes. You know why? It keeps me from making the same mistakes. Ooh, some of y'all show sure looking serious today. <laughs> hey, man, watch this, watch this. Sure. Watch this. Come on, let's, let's. Now, now, now watch God. Watch, watch him. He's a father. I am the Lord your God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. God kept telling Israel, look what I did for you. Because God said to the Lord, he kept on saying, I love you. I did this because I love you. Only people that love you will tell you no. Well, all your friends saying, go for it, and this is not wrong. A person that loves you will say no. No. And it will stain. When it says we need to cut up that credit card, that will stain. Come on, come on. Come on, wives. I said that will stain. When the husband said cut up the credit card. That'll stain. But what are you doing? I'm keeping you from bankruptcy. When, 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 God, when God does this, he's keeping us from a bankrupt life. That's why he built this. Come on, come on, come on. I'm, I'm trying to get there. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. See, that's, not, not, that's a, thou shalt not as a fence. 
And when we look at this, and when I used to look at this growing up and even, even getting older, we don't realize this is a prosperity plan. This is not to limit your pleasure, your fun. This is a prosperity plan because God knows if you do this, if you put anything else before me, you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be fulfilled. It might feel good, but it won't be good to you. He, he started off in Genesis with Adam and Eve. You can have all of this, the thousands of trees in the garden. You can have all of this, but don't touch this. I like that. Look at somebody said, don't touch this. How fast somebody say, you can't touch this. Huh? Huh? That's what I used to say when they used to bring their basketball in there. Bring their basketball, lay it up. I'll slap it out and say, don't bring that up in here. <laughs> but I had a little more animated words with it. <laughs> Thank God for salvation. Watch this. You can have everything, just don't, this one tree, don't touch it. The mistake that made it start standing around and looking at it. <laughs> Look at somebody else, I caught you looking. <laughs> Come on, I need you to minister. Look at, I'm talking to the old folks. Y'all look around and say, I caught you looking. And then ain't that stop looking. You know I'm talking to you, right? You know I'm talking to you. You know God's talking to you. I caught you looking. Because the more you look, the more you get intrigued. Hmm? And the more you get intrigued. I'm not, talk, I'm not talking about just young people. I'm talking about everybody. Huh? huh? We got anybody in, in, in here over 70? Let me see. Yeah. Anybody over 70 in here? Okay. At what point did the sexual urge leave? <laughs> they say you're going to ask somebody older than them. <laughs> I'm talking to all of us. The more you look, the more you get intrigued by it. And before you know it, you start talking about, that don't hurt that bad. Don't touch this. God's not been mean. He's been a loving father. He's been a loving father. Man, I wish somebody would explain it to me like that. They explained to me, don't touch this because God has sent you to hell. I wish somebody would have told me, he's doing that because he, he loves you. You are his child and he has a gate to keep you from being destroyed. trying to keep you from having a life full of trouble. All right, come on, come on, come on, watch this. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. God is saying to us, you need to make time for me. You need to make time for me. How much time are you giving me? Do you have a Sabbath in your life? Make time for me. If you're ever in love with anybody, the one thing you want them to do is make time for you. You want to spend time with them. Time with them. If you ain't doing nothing but just looking at them. Come on. If you ain't doing nothing, say, what you doing? <laughs> nothing. What you doing? Nothing. Let me tell you something. Our kids got our phones. They got all kinds of stuff. What you need to do is let them see this over and over again. You need to put this on their iPhone, what we tape in the day. Because this helps all of us. Because nobody in this building, no one in this building from the pulpit to the door is beyond temptation. Jesus Christ was tempted in all points. If he tempted Jesus, he's on his way to your house now. And there's something, I'm, let me get real, there's something in everybody's life in here today that'll make you double, do a double take. There's some things you look at, you keep on going, but there's some things in your life that make you. Look at someone say, I caught you looking. <laughs> I caught you looking, yes I did. <laughs> I want to be real. 
There's something in every person's life in the building to make you do a double take. Or else you're beyond temptation. You're beyond temptation. And sometimes we sometimes we think it's just 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 the way people look and the way they move and, and all the sexual. No, no, no. Uh uh-uh. uh. It's not just that all the time. It's just people knowing how to treat you. <laughs> Can't communicate with you. Listen to you. Make you feel special. That goes beyond what they look like. So everybody in here, God says, I got a prick in everybody's life in here. That's to keep you from going any further. All right, let me, let me get through. Let me get through. Let me get through. So I got it. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy works. Come on. I think I skipped to verse 11. Go to verse 11. I think I went down to verse 11. Did I go down to verse 11? Okay, 12, 12, go to verse 12. There should be always time for God. Got to have time for God. Let me get to the real stuff in a minute. I'm going to get to the real stuff and I'll be done. Honor your father and your mother that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God give you. These are the commandments. We call them the Ten Commandments. And as God said, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. But he has a reason for it. He starts off telling you, I love you. And because I love you and I brought you out of bondage, I don't want you going back into bondage. Honor your father and your mother. They brought you into the world. Be loyal to them. That's all of us. That's all of us. I don't care if your mother's 100, 90, whatever. He said, honor them. Now, some things they do, you might not respect that, but you are to give them honor. Verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not murder. God. Wow. Thou shalt not murder. See, you, th- you think that don't pertain to us. I got to deal with that this week. In the heat of passion. So what God does, he put pricks because you don't have to pull the triggers who you was with. It is when you let anger get the best of you. So he says, don't, don't, don't kill. Don't murder. Most of us got that. But then he, this, is, this is the hard one he's sent this way. This is the one that make the church get real quiet. Thou shall not commit what? Adultery. Come on, say it loud. Thou shall not what? Adultery. Thou shall not commit what? Adultery. Say it loud. You're black and you're proud. Say it loud. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say that loud. We, we, the struggle with that, because that also includes sexual sins. We struggle with that. A generation that struggles with that. A generation that, that have forsaken the, the marital vows. struggle with that. He's saying, don't have sex until you get married. Hush. I think I hear somebody calling my name. He says, don't have sex until you get married. Now, maybe ch- y'all come quiet. Look at somebody and say, when did he change that? Because I need to, well, y'all, well, y'all looking, it looked like he might have changed it. Did he get, is it an update to this or something? Did, did I miss a memo or something like that? Because I thought this was still the same. Now listen to me. It challenges us. The church don't want to deal with things that, ch- it wouldn't be a temptation if it didn't challenge you. So let's go past, it challenges you. I mean, you just, you know, that's what you think in the church. The church lied to us because they told us, you know, don't, don't, you can't have sex until you get married. Then they said, when you get married, then you have all the sex you want to. Mm-hmm. Let 
and all the brothers <laughs> <laughs> said the devil is a lie. All right, watch this, watch this. That's a fence. If you go past that fence, things can happen. It can happen. You know what it's like to counsel people that are young that just don't have HIV but also have AIDS and that life has been totally changed. In our men class, we talked about these pricks and, and we, had, we had brothers that said, you know, having two kids by the time they were 16, how it changed and shifted their whole lives. How some said that they had, they, 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 they did adultery and committed certain things and then destroyed their marriages. See, this is, this is a prick that we don't want to talk about. Now, 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 hear me. Hear me. Let me show you my shirt again to let you know. And some and such were, he ain't talking to rub our mistakes in our face. That's not what God is doing. He's trying to keep us from making the same mistakes. I'm, I'm almost there. How many of us in here today got pricked, kept on getting pricked, pushed past the prick, and God didn't let it destroy us? Come on, come on. It, it should have destroyed you, but you, it, come on. It, it. Now, I said to our young people this, because you said, well, if you made the mistake, then I can make the mistake. Well, you got to understand the biblical principle. God says to Belshazzar, you watch your father do this. And I punished your father for seven years, but I restored him. You watch your father do it. That puts you in another category. You knew better. This is Bible. Book of Daniel. He said you knew better because you saw what he did and what you just did. He got seven years of punishment. You're going to die tonight. We have to let them know, hey, some of the stuff that we did, if you do, you got, that's truth. That's biblical truth. Yeah, and he's still gracious. He's still merciful because he lets you see it ahead of time. This world is so sexually oriented. Come on. See it. Yeah, see, y'all yeah, don't want to, yeah. see, that's just in church. You don't, don't want to go there. I'm, I'm, I mean, everything, the commercials and everything, uh, uh, the telephones, you got a telephone, all kind of stuff pops up. Come on. The church needs to stop acting like they can't be tempted. The victory is that you overcome the temptation. If there's no temptation coming your way, you got nothing. You, you don't need the power of God. We need the power of God because when temptation comes, we overcome it. And there's, there's a, there's pricks that God puts in our lives. I'm, I'm almost there. How real can I be? No, no, no. I said, how real can I be? Terrell, how real can I be? We put pricks in our lives. All of us. There's not one person in this building. Because you didn't do it doesn't mean you weren't tempted by it. That's what people mistake. They said, well, I, I, I can testify. I went through it. No, we got the same temptation. We just said no. It comes to our minds. Pricks. Thank God for the pricks. Thank God for the pricks. Let me tell you, I said it to you once, I'll testify again because I'm trying to help you. Pastor, in 30 years, now you have to know my background. I don't say this because I'm not bragging. But I'm just going to let you know. I was a virgin when I got married at 30. That wasn't by accident. That was by plan. I had to jump out the bed and run sometimes. That was by plan. You hear what I'm telling you? So that brings a certain amount of hypocrisy and self-righteousness. Because some things that we've never done, we think we never do. But pastoring this, 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 this one lady, 
that was nowhere physically attracted to her. But she said to me, she said, she said, I know what you go through. She said, they don't appreciate you. They don't know what you're going through. She said, but I know what you go through. And she said, I can help you. Of course, of course, I, I, you know, I passed that temptation. But when I got back, I heard God say, I saw you looking. <laughs> y'all don't want to. <laughs> Come on, y'all. We... God, said, God says, I saw you looking. Because it wasn't the looks, it was. They don't appreciate, but, but I know how I'll appreciate. Y'all better hear me. Wives, you better hear me. Husbands, you better hear me. This right here is sexual. You better hear that. Now, now let me say this because I got to say this. Now, some of y'all are saying, well, he's just doing it because First Lady's gone. <laughs> she just happened not to be here today. <laughs> All right, okay. But I, I'm, I'm real. I'm real. That's why the Bible says we need a covering. That's what the Bible says to husband and wife. Do not defraud one another. Don't separate because the devil will get in in, in row. God says, don't even do it with me in fasting if you ain't taking care of business. There are pricks in our lives. Stand on your feet, everybody. Just right where you are. Just stand on your feet, everybody. Nobody moving. You have to move. We're going to get the altar workers in a minute. Just stand on your feet. Now, I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep our young people and the people here from saying something that for Tima we've all said. If I had to do it all over again, there are some things we would change. Now, what you feeling, that ain't me, that's God. That's the conviction from God. So don't be mad at me, that's 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 God. You feeling you feeling a little sting right now, that's a prick. And he's warning, saying, don't go beyond this. Don't go beyond this. I love you. I'm not trying to destroy you. Mm. I wish somebody could do Jeremiah 29 11 real quick. I think I have 29 11 real quick. Put it up there. I think I'm right. And it, this, this changed my life. I got saved because I didn't want to go to hell. I'm going to tell you. That's a good reason to get saved, though, not to go on and go to hell. That's why I got saved. But somewhere down the road, I changed where I began to see the love of God. And, and, and it's not even about hell for me anymore. This thing ain't about hell. It's because of what he, do, what he did, what he does for me. It's about his love. He kept me from destroying myself. Watch this. Now watch, watch this. Watch this. Are you listening? I'm almost there. I'm almost there. But l- listen to this. God speaking to Israel. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. You know what God is saying? Because see, see, this is what's happening. They think God is trying to destroy them. They're having a conversation with God. Because he's told them no. God has told them no because God is a parent. He's told them no, and they, they're struggling because they think God is against them. See, when you understand, when you, we look at text, but we don't understand the context. When you see the context, it means everything. They thinking God don't like them. Anybody ever thought that in here? Anybody ever thought God was against you? Didn't even think God loved you? That's why they are here. You ever thought that God was trying to keep you from having fun? Yeah. So God says, no, 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 no. God says, I'm not thinking about that. What you not thinking, Lord? He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not what? Thoughts of peace and not what? Shout it out, not what? You know what he's saying? 
I'm not thinking about how to destroy you. I'm not thinking about how to keep fun out of your life. I'm not thinking about how not to make you happy. I'm thinking about how to give you an expected end. I'm thinking about how... The Bible says that God thinks about you more than there are sands, more than there are, are sand on the seashore. The grains of sand, God thinks about you in one day more than there are grains of sand on the seashore. He's constantly thinking about us individually, not collectively, individually, because he's God. And he can treat every one of us like we're an only child. He's constantly thinking about you. So he says, I'm not thinking about how to kill you. I'm thinking about how to bless you. I'm thinking about how to make you happy. I'm thinking about how to change your life. Man, that's powerful. We need to know that early. Early in life. Cause I, I don't, I don't want, I, I don't, I, I want, to, I want this setting right here. But I want, I want my altar workers to start moving. Altar workers, I want you to come. I want you to start moving. I want, I want you to start moving. Altar workers, I don't want you to disrupt the setting that we have. I don't want you to disrupt the setting that we have. I don't want you to disrupt. You know, when God gave me this, I really struggled because I knew it was such a word from God that I said, Lord, Lord, help me, help me to convey it. Help me. I don't, I don't need a lot of scriptures, Lord. Just help me to let them see what you're trying to tell us. And to the, Paul said, he said to Paul, the more you kick, the more you hurt yourself. Hear me. It is not God that is hurting you. It is you hurting yourself. It is us that are inviting pain into our own lives. And our Heavenly Father, he, he's got the baby gate, and he says, I'm trying to keep you out of that. Thank you, Jesus. God does things in our lives to keep us on this side of the gate. Jesus died. The only way anybody can go to hell, they have to, they have to step over the bloody body of Jesus. He died to keep us out of hell. He didn't even design hell for us. The rich man that ended up in hell, the Bible says, God put Lazarus right at his gate every day. Every day he had to wake up and see Lazarus. There are things that he put in our lives to keep pain from us and destruction. Oh, yeah, he's talking. He, he, he's talking. He's talking. Right, right. I, I, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you're into. You can change it today. You can change it. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The X Ministries is located. He knew you was going to do all of that, and guess what he did? He still died. 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock. Call 501 329 2055 or go to axeministriesonline.org for more information. We would love you to partner with our ministry. Please go to our website, axeministriesonline.org, and find out how you can partner with us. For your gifts, please click on the Donate Online button or text the amount you wish to give to 501-302-4242.